Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tribal Electric Tuesdays, where we dive into the technique of separating botanical particles using static electricity. If you're curious about this topic, keep watching. In last week's video, we discussed decapitation. We received insightful comments which, as always, are appreciated. I suggest checking those out. To be fair, we have identified how to resolve the agglomeration issue, which we will discuss in future videos. However, the comments offer perspectives we had not considered. For example, using a vacuum to remove fines is a brilliant idea I hadn't considered at this stage. This could prove useful, especially when processing products such as Keef that may only contain 30% heads, the rest being contaminants and fines. Given the recent tragedy of inhalation-related death in the industry, dust must be kept to a minimum. So you're now familiar with the various means of charging particles, and you have deciphered how to liberate your particles. It's now time to actually charge those particles. We'll dive into the friction, conduction, and induction methods individually and explore which ones are necessary for a successful process. To charge particles through friction, Simply set the particles in motion. Though we have received many comments about sound waves and secret methods, I won't be discussing those methods. Only methods supported by scientific literature will be discussed. Anyways, one way to charge particles is through vibration. This can be achieved manually by shaking a screen or using a motorized vibratory device. Although this method does result in particle charging, it also creates more problems than it solves, notably agglomeration. Our objection is to create a continuous device that charges particles as they are fed into the system. This eliminates manual methods as unviable. One option is to use a motorized roller on a pipe mounted at an incline similar to a trommel. Particles are fed in one end, tumbled and charged through the pipe and exit charge on the other end. However, this simple idea raised more questions than answers. What is the optimal diameter for the pipe to allow for rolling friction and to free fall within the tube? What is the required resonance time for charging, which is dependent on the pipe length, incline, and rotational speed? The longer the resonance time, the more particles interact and charge. Thus, longer tubes create more charge. Rotational speed can adjust resonance time and free fall trajectory. An incline also influences residence time. Should the pipe be smooth or rough? Literature suggests surface roughness plays a role, or does it? A rough tube should promote charging, while a smooth tube may or may not be as effective. Would baffles within the pipe promote a more efficient freefall? Does freefall actually help charging? What material is best? Copper? Steel? PVC? Acrylic? Materials have different charges and polarities. What is the best and how does it influence the particle's charge? Our findings ruled out metal as it caused particles to discharge. Could the tube itself be charged to overcome this issue? We also observed that electrically charged particles stuck to the pipe. This varies by material properties based on the triboelectric series. Is a different material or an opposing polarity required? Is this caused by static charge or surface roughness? Perhaps temperature or humidity? Can compressed gas be used to accelerate the particles within the pipe? And does this change the resonance time needed for charging? In theory, a faster moving particle would resist this attraction and interact more with other particles, but resonance time would decrease. At what point does it become infeasible or impractical to have an exceedingly long pipe? Another finding with this method was the tendency of the particles to agglomerate. Was this due to humidity and temperature, or did we simply charge particles effectively causing them to agglomerate? One method we saw uses a jet of air at some point on the trommel. The jet of air is used to break up agglomeration within the system. Keep in mind that it's pointless to charge particles if they are not liberated, as electrostatic separation becomes impossible. Thus, agglomeration at this point is a deal breaker. As you can see, the more solutions we explored, the more questions emerge. Should we continue research on the pipes or should we desist? Have you tried pipes to charge particles? 
I'd like to know if you have experience or ideas about this process. If so, please share in the comments below. Thanks for watching.